What brings you out here to this protest? I just really want to support the nurses here. Um, they've been said they have to get the vaccine or they will lose their jobs. And I don't think that the vaccine should be the, the reason why people are losing their jobs. And so I'm, gonna, I'm here in support of them and their freedom. They should have a choice. It's their body, their choice, and that's why I'm here. I'm out here because I oppose the vaccine mandate for healthcare workers and healthcare providers. And um, I'd like to put up the fight here before it progresses more and more. Before it progresses more and more because I believe that it's not just going to stop with healthcare workers. So if we don't uh, sort of draw the line right here, it's just going to keep progressing. So I'm against that. This is not about the vaccine itself at this point. It's about my liberty. When you tell me that I have to choose between my basic rights to survive and pay my bills, or the vaccine, it's not a choice anymore. That's an insult to the American. Yeah, I'm here exactly for that reason, uh, just to support the movement, um, because I don't feel like it's right to be mandated to put something in your body. Because I'm an ER trauma nurse, and I've seen what's been going on from day one. As a community, the people who are against getting a vaccine, we're not against the vaccine, but we're against the mandate of everybody getting mandated to get the vaccine. I have uh, my sisters, they're all working in the healthcare. My, my oldest sister is a doctor. Um, the other ones are nurses, and she's actually behind me. She's uh, in HR right now. We're all not going to take the vaccine, and we might lose our, they might lose their job for that. I personally, I'm, in, I'm still in school. I was doing Running Start in Bellingham Technical College, and um, they're starting to va require the vaccine over there, and I was actually gonna go into the nursing program before they started mandating the vaccines. Now, I've never been vaccinated with anything other than a tetanus shot, not even the flu shot, and I've been healthy all my life. And I just feel that I'm, people, you can get the vaccine if you feel you want or you need it, but we need to stop this mandate. We cannot be mandated and forced to do something we don't want to do. That just takes our freedom away from us, which is written to us in the Constitution that we are free. Freedom of choice. I support anyone's freedom to choose whether or not they want to or don't want to take the vaccine, and I think that it needs to stay that way, that it's very important. Vaccines remain voluntary and are never made mandatory. You gotta read the sign. Second question with Twitter, uh, if it's been a net positive or negative. I can't really see a way that it's been a net positive, um, just in terms of our society. Um, I don't use Twitter, so I don't know much about it, but it seems to have just generally a negative connotation about it, and I don't think it's a very good platform for uh, discourse, and um, it just sort of, it rewards, uh, you know, with the like system and stuff, it really rewards like negative type of responses and posts and rewards like witty short comebacks that aren't really valuable to discourse on the whole and I think they've probably there's a with social media there's a whole thing with like censorship and if there should be allowed to censor people or not and um, I would argue that a lot of them like Facebook and Twitter and Instagram and all these platforms have sort of become the new public square of the 21st century and so should I would like to see them value freedom of speech for everyone more so than they do right now. Does Inslee live up to Washington State with his mandates? No, I think he's a globalist and I think he's a commie freak. That's what I think. And I did not vote for him. I voted for him the first time but when I found out what he's up to and I realized what a scammer he is I realized, no, he's a fraud, he's a liar. Absolutely not. Um, he doesn't provide the actual scientific proof needed to back up what he declares as an emergency. There is a lot of contradiction, and a lot of people who have the knowledge, such as medical personnel, are being stifled and not allowed to speak their minds or they risk their job. And I think that that's an absolute tragedy, and he is directly responsible for that. He has the power to not allow it to happen. Instead, he chooses to put it in effect. Do you share the sentiment about hospitals being overwhelmed with COVID? And, do, and following that, do you believe that Florida has a good take on the situation? 
I don't share the same sentiment that what they're doing here in the state. Absolutely not. I haven't since day one. Three months into it, I was questioning it. I'll always take my patients here and their safety first and foremost. But once I started learning more about it, then I was like, no, this isn't right. Something's not right. We never had a surge. There's so much that happened that the media is putting out there that the public doesn't know about. It's all lies. It's total lies. And even right now with the vaccine mandates, I would never touch it. Absolutely never touch it. Nobody's talking about the vaccine injuries that I'm seeing. And it's unacceptable is a good word. It's egregious. It's abhorrent. So what's happening is dark and we need to stand up and fight for it. We need more people to just come to the front lines who are in the profession, not stand on the hero mentality that was not warranted, um, and just speak the truth. With the overflowing of the hospitals, um, they're not being, I mean, people, I, I know things have been said that they're like, okay, we actually have extra room now. Like people are going home early because there's no one to take care of. Also like overwhelming and there's so many deaths happening and all of that, they're not, okay? And if they're saying that there's breakthroughs, like there's all this thing through the vaccine, people who have gotten the vaccine. Yes, exactly. Okay, maybe, maybe a few, but it's so below what people are actually saying that it's not that much of a concern, okay? Um, with the county, it's saying like the weekly thing is one person. One to zero people a week are dying from COVID. That's it. Is that overwhelming? I don't think so. I do not share that sentiment. Yeah, and I personally know someone who was at the ER last night, and it was totally empty. The COVID unit was empty completely. There, like, there was no one there, no one in the waiting room at all. So I just don't think it's as big as an issue as they're making it out to be.